Okay, sorry for the long uh, delay. Okay, so today I'm going to present uh, UV and Marimo. Uh, uh, so first I'm going to introduce uh, in, uh, a small introduction, a little bit of philosophy and uh, talking. Uh, so the, the first thing I wanted to I wanted to to mention is uh, start uh, with this phrase from Martin McLuhan, which is uh, we shape our tools and thereafter our tools shape us. And uh, this is going to be relevant for these two tools. Uh, I think that the way that these two tools change the way we work, and uh, I think that they are both interesting to analyze. Uh, so now, most of this reflection is coming from uh, a blog post from Trevor Mans in Reproducible Twitter Notebooks. And uh, the first thing I want to admit is that uh, I like uh, Twitter Notebooks. And uh, this is uh, uh, the answer from Bellamy Howard to Joel Bruce, who, that, who did a famous talk, which is called I Don't Like Twitter Notebooks. This is a great talk, by the way. And Jeremy Howard replied with another talk, which is called uh, I Like uh, the Notebooks. And uh, yeah, you should check these two videos. Uh, but I, I do recognize that uh, Jupyter Notebook, I mean, I, I like Jupyter Notebook because, because uh, they allow you to have like this immediate feedback. You, you run something, you get a result, uh, you iterate on that result and you continue. And it allows you to explore and it allows you to do many things. But I do recognize that this uh, has uh, some reproducibility problems. And uh, for example, this is a study from uh, NYU in which they did a large scale study about the quality and reproducibility of Twitter notebooks in GitHub. And uh, they studied, they crawled 1.16 million notebooks. Uh, they, the authors mentioned that most repositories do not declare the dependencies. Uh, those that do uh, don't declare all of them, so there are still a lot of dependencies that are not uh, included. A lot of Python packages which are not for use that are not included. Uh, the authors are able to execute 24% of the Jupyter notebooks only, and from the ones that they were able to uh, execute, uh, only 4% report the same result as the result that is mentioned in the Jupyter notebook. Just out of curiosity, uh, do you know uh, how strict some result uh, was taken there? Yeah, so uh, the, the, there are some critics and online you can see. So one of the things that they do is, uh, for example, they took the order that was, uh, so for example, if they have a cell one, three, four, uh, so they follow that order. Uh, but then if there is uh, the disorder, they try to follow the order that is mentioned in the cells. Yeah. And if that runs, uh, they, they need to see that the result is, is the same, but they did not check. And this is something that one of the critics is like, if you just run uh, uh, run all uh, the cells and if it works. Uh, but actually, my question is more about what was the meaning of some results? Because for instance, if you have some randomness and you don't yeah. identify the seed, uh, if it's Monte Carlo, you will have some result up to uh, 1 to 1 percent. Uh, I, I assume that uh, most of the 1.16 were not uh, probabilistic, but uh, yeah. Well, if it's uh, uh, something but yeah, but, uh, no, I think it's definite. But in that case, you can also say, okay, then in that case, if you want to make it reproducible, you make put a random seed or. But yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, it's still. Uh, uh, I mean, in, online you can find many critics to this article. This article is relatively well cited, uh, but it's still I think it's impressive that only four four percent of all the Jupyter notebooks that are shared uh, you get this result. And even if it's twenty four or even if it's fifty, it's still pretty bad. Uh, sorry, just to check, but the twenty four is for uh, the automatic procedure, like if I have a script and just it works, it doesn't work. But never try because you cannot give the numbers to uh, take a notebook. Okay, I made this work whatever the cost. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time you can do that, but it's it's costly. Exactly, exactly. exactly. And that that's the that, that's part of the point. So mm -hmm. one of the point is that you need to be very disciplined, and most of us are not. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to make a reproducible notebook, uh, you really need to take into account which packages are you installing, uh, how are you installing them, which version of the package are you installing. Uh, what was the Python version that you used, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of these things are not something that most people should know, perhaps. Uh, for example, if it's, uh, there are some experts in geology who are running some Jupyter notebook, it's unclear to me that they should uh, be uh, have all this knowledge uh, 
Okay, if it's people from informatics, perhaps you can uh, raise the bar a little bit. But if they are experts in other fields like uh, wireless or whatever, I mean, uh, why should they know, uh, okay, which part of version I'm using, which dependency, which version, and uh, how to declare and how to activate a uh, virtual environment, etc. Yeah. Uh, and this falls into, so it's Marco around. I'm going to speak bad about C++. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to quote uh, Jeff Adwards, and Jeff uh, Adwards uh, mentioned, uh, I often think of C++ as my own personal Pit of despair, programming language, and managing C++ make it so easy to fall into traps, think buffer overruns, memory leaks, double freeze, mismatch between allocator and the allocator, using free at memory, empty dozen ways to trash the stack or heap, uh, and those are just some memory issues. There are a lot of more gadgets in C++, C++ often throw you into the pit of despair, and you have to climb your app to the hill of quality. And this is something that, uh, that he mentions, that he, he quotes, and, uh, and Jeff Adwards mentioned, okay, wouldn't it be cool if we designed a tool, if you had a tool that keep you from falling to the pit of despair? And this is in part uh, why people prefer uh, Python and uh, C Sharp instead of C++. But will it be even better if you use a tool that lets you uh, effortlessly fall into what he calls the pit of success? And uh, what he basically says of this pit of success is you want the, the user simply fall into winning practices by using the tools, and to the extent that we make it easy to get into trouble, we have failed them. And uh, and this is uh, uh, basically what, what he mentioned, and I think it's uh, related not only to software, but to anything is like a well-designed <laughs> system, make it easy to do the right things, and annoying, but not impossible to do the wrong thing. So, uh, and I think uh, my claim in this talk will be that UVM and Imo approaches to uh, do the right thing uh, out of the, the way. Okay. And the, the other thing I wanted to mention is these two facts. So this is from GitHub uh, October uh, report. And uh, uh, Python doesn't seem to be disappearing. Uh, Python is, is, is everything is uh, increasing the quantity of users. And the second thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, Jupyter notebooks don't appear to be disappearing, despite that a lot of people uh, uh, a few years back uh, we're saying, uh, uh, you know what, the uh, notebooks is like for kids and uh, they, they will disappear. Uh, real people use uh, a normal ID. Did you ever try to see the percentage of notebook in the recent years that were just a clone of uh, the PyTorch uh, tutorial? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, one of the things that the, the report mentioned is that AI is uh, currently pushing towards uh, these trends. And, okay, uh, and Thinking again about all these uh, tools, uh, I think that UV and Manimo make us rethink what is the getting started. So if you go to a package or if you go to a some repo, you will find something like this, which is uh, first you need to uh, create a virtual environment, then you need to activate a virtual environment, then you need to install the requirements. Sometimes you just put uh, pip install, and uh, and then you will, you need to run the Jupyter Lab uh, notebook uh, if you have a study done with that. And uh, I think that there are a lot of things that can go wrong. Uh, so first of all, which Python? Uh, which Python I'm using here? Which version of Python I'm using? Uh, what happened if I forgot to activate the virtual environment? Uh, which version of the packages I'm using? Which version of their dependencies? Because sometimes you, you have the packages, but the dependencies have updated. So uh, this is also something uh, to think about, and also about which pip I'm using. And uh, which Jupyter lab, uh, in which order of the cells, and I, uh, and one of the claims of uh, Trevor Mans, and I think that uh, it's like the the goal would be, the gold standard would be of getting started should be a single command, and uh, no further guidance is required. Uh, magic tool, notebook, and things should work, and you should be able to reproduce uh, what is inside the notebook. Uh, and I think that UV and Marimo help us do this, at least a huge jump towards that talk. Okay, so now let's talk, go into the talk. <laughs> so I'm going to present UV. So what is UV? UV is an extremely fast Python package and project manager. So the first time I entered into this, uh, I was uh, drawn because of the speed. 
But uh, if you are like me, uh, after you train, uh, after you you appreciate the speed, you appreciate a lot of other things. Um, uh, so you being comparison with others like poetry, PDM, lip sync, it's much much faster, ten to one thousand times faster than PIP, and it is written in Rust. Uh, but that's not only, that's not part of, I mean, this is one part of the reason why it is so fast, but uh, there are many other issues. Uh, uh, it was announced in February this year, so it's relatively new. Uh, if you think about it, it's like, uh, how much? Eight, nine, nine months? <laughs> and uh, the quantity of sites in GitHub is 25,000. The quantity of downloads per month is 20 million. And the 5P share, so that's all the packages that are downloaded 5P. Uh, from PyP, uh, it's 30% uh, already and growing. So this was the result from October, uh, but I assume that this is still growing. So uh, it's not some theoretical uh, uh, package. It is uh, really something that is used and uh, more and more people are using it. And, uh, and this is part of a trend, which is a lot of this, and I think that perhaps uh, many of the talks will be related. I don't know if this, uh, if the Python uh, fix tool scripts, and <laughs> etc. The, the seminar will uh, mention a lot of these packages, but there are a lot of these packages which are written in Rust now that are becoming extremely useful for Python people. So one of them is Polars, which uh, perhaps some of you have heard or have used. It's like the replacement for Pandas, and it's uh, super fast. Uh, Pytantic, if you want to validate something, uh, uh, TanTV for search, uh, Quadrant for uh, vector databases, LanTV for vector databases of multimodality. And the last two are done by the same team, which is Astral, which does UV. And the second one is RAP, and RAP is a linter uh, and formatter. And basically, uh, yeah, it. Uh, why this package became so fast popular it was because it's from the same people who did RAF. And uh, since RAF uh, became uh, very popular, then uh, th this is part of that trend. Yeah. Yeah, for record, I heard a lot of uh, people talking about uh, RAF recently. I still exactly do not know how it works. Perhaps we can. Uh, okay. uh, I wanted to update uh, Jupiter Lab. Uh, Two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, I could not install Jupyter Lab anymore for uh, Firefox, for example, uh, because of Rust. <laughs> and and why it's because of uh, the Nokia PC, uh, it doesn't allow in the installation of. Uh, I don't know how to install Rust on PC mm -hmm. uh, from Nokia. Just for your information, okay. I don't know. Did you maybe do, have... you have a, do, do you have a corporate uh, PC or yeah? yeah. 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 And you put the install. So I will discuss okay. it today. Yeah. And uh, so there is this trend, and actually it, here below you can see, I don't know if I can move this, ah, yes. So there is this article by Prasant Rao uh, from uh, Kutsu, which speak about how Rus is now supercharging Python from the ground up. And basically the, the idea is that in Python is a very nice uh, language, but it's very slow. Uh, you need these other things to make it fast, like C or C++ or C Python, or and now Rust. Uh, And uh, Python packaging is a mess, and it has always been a mess. Uh, I guess you should be able to hide the. Uh, how do you? How do you? Maybe in more, I guess. Uh, hide the floating. Hide the floating. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, Thanks. And Python package management has always been a mess, and there is like this XKCD in which you have like, okay, you, what, what should I use? Should I use Anaconda Python? Should I use another PIP? Uh, homebrew Python, what PIP? Uh, OS Python, homebrew Python, Python or binary. And then in your computer, you have all these uh, Python new env, uh, user log lib, Python 3.6, Python 2.7, et cetera, et cetera, user local seller, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and this is uh, really the state of uh, Python now, and hopefully you be uh, you will make this easier. And uh, there is a risk. Uh, <coughs> ah, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, and actually, you can see this even from uh, experts like Hamid Hussein, uh, which is a, 
uh, had many packages and now he's working on consulting and he, he works in Python every day and he he put in, uh, like last week he put, I'm trying to upgrade my Python version in my base Conda environment, which me lack, and then he says uh, update and buying a new laptop. <laughs> so you, you, you see that this is not just for newbies, it's not like like only for new people entering the, the Python ecosystem, it's like everywhere it's uh, a big mess. No, it's using Conda to the new week. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, and uh, there is a risk, uh, uh, which is assumed by UV, which is, okay, there is this problem, there are 14 competing uh, package managers, 14 ridiculous, we need to develop a new universal uh, Python packaging situation, there are 15 uh, competing standards, okay. Uh, and why Python packaging is a difficult problem? Uh, so here I'm going to speak to the nerds in the team, in the, in the group. Uh, first, of, first of all, because Python doesn't support uh, multi-venture support, which means that for each of your dependencies, you only need to select one from the possibilities. And from these possibilities, uh, I mean, you need, you, it, they need to be there, so they need to exist. And uh, uh, only one of them in each of these uh, clauses, and all of them, uh, but not all the rest, right? So it, it can be mapped to a sad problem, and a sad problem, a satisfiability, satisfiability problem, and a satisfiability problem is not to be NP hard. <laughs> and actually, the the, the uh, Charlie March, which works in this UV, he mentions uh, how they try to solve this sad problem. <laughs> and then uh, also Python has another problem, which is that uh, it's very rich syntax for requiring. So, for example, you can require things for Windows, for Linux. For, uh, so, for example, okay, people from Windows can use Pydantic uh, smaller than one. Uh, people uh, who have a Mac can use uh, bigger than, uh, have to be bigger than uh, two. Uh, and all these kind of rich syntax, which make the satisfiability problem even harder. And they use uh, another uh, SAT solvers uh, using uh, some algebraic decision diagrams. And uh, in this talk, uh, he really speaks about all the difficulties that they face with this. Uh, uh, packaging uh, problem. And if you want, you can add, you know, you can uh, specify some uh, installation option, like uh, install with binaries, something like that. And uh, if it's an over layer of NPRMS, because you cannot be sure of uh, what every possible combination of installation option will produce in Yeah, uh, and, and actually, uh, he mentioned two other things. One, one of them is like, uh, Sometimes you can publish a package and just like put some metadata like uh, in an email format or something like that, which is something like crazy. It's uh, and uh, and also all this I don't know if you have checked, but there is all like dev options or like uh, mm -hmm. so you have all these CUDA options, put it in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's really a difficult problem, and uh, so you should check that talk to see how they are solving it. Just the part where you use public packages, for instance, I use private packages, and I, I go to specify, you know, the specific address of uh, the GitHub private event, but we, how do you access it, uh, which type of uh, version do you use? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, so first, how do you install uh, UV? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to convince you to do this, <laughs> but in the meantime, you can uh, skip this. So this is the way how you install it, and you can also install it with uh, PIP, which actually have made a, a joke to many people saying that this is the last time that you will use PIP. <laughs> and do you have a command line for Windows? Uh, no, <laughs> but I, I, in the installation, the, 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 all the all the possibilities. So, so what do you know? You've got this uh, nice uh, instruction. I don't get it at all, but who does the curl, but for Windows? Okay, yeah, I assume that it's, uh, they, they try to make it very easy to, to install so that people try it. So, and uh, the common workflow, as I was mentioning before, it's uh, this is like recommended by the Python packaging user guide. Uh, it's to use virtual environments. Uh, when you're working with their packages. And as I mentioned, this is more or less the workflow. So you create a virtual environment, uh, you activate it, and then you install dependencies. And the common workflow in uh, UV is the following. So first, to create a virtual environment, you do UV, then, and this will create a virtual environment at the folder dot them. If you want to change it, you can change it, of course. Uh, to activate is the same. So it's uh, source activate. 
And to install dependencies, instead of this Python minus mpip or pip uh, that some people use, but then uh, you need to check the, if the pip is the right one, uh, uh, it changes to uvpip. So perhaps, uh, and I think that is the, <coughs> uh, I should do the demo part. So this is uh, more or less the workflow, and uh, this is the the workflow in the other one. So let's, uh, let's see if this one works. I know how to do it in the other one, Okay. And uh, demo part. So, uh, can you see it? Does I need to make it bigger? No, it's okay. It's in the room. Okay, uh, and let's see if I need, if I have a, a test link, do I have it? No, okay. I'm going to create a test link. Uh, I'm going to create a, a TV test link. And then I'm going to, this is the, the workflow. So now it created a virtual environment and it created a virtual environment at dot them. It created a virtual environment with the Python 3.12 which is the default that you define. Uh, and uh, now that you have a virtual environment, you activate it. So it's, uh, as it says here, uh, you need to do this. And uh, once you have it, here it is activated. So you can see that it's in this, and then you can do UVP install. Uh, and you can see that if you have installed scikit-learn in uh, PIP, you will know that this is fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yes. Okay. Uh, just uh, one question: Does it maintain the pipe project uh, to ML as well, or not? Who? Do you have the pipe project to ML uh, that is uh, shipped with this, or uh, it's just installation in the long? Do, do you have something that records the version of the package that you're using for for the uh, usage? Yeah, yeah. So this we will talk, but for the moment, this is just like the normal uh, okay. the normal usage. So this is just uh, so it's a replacement for uh, BEM. It's a replacement for PIP. And uh, when you have a package and you want to test it in different things, uh, you usually want to test with different Python versions. So uh, what you can do is uh, you can create uh, a virtual environment with a different Python version. And normally, uh, let's see here. Then, it's in your test kits on their own so if you want to go out and go. Ah, so I deactivate the environment, so now it should be fine. Uh, now I create a new one, but now I specify uh, Python 3.10, let's say. And there it is, it is uh, uh, 3.10, uh, and now I can install. Uh... Okay, now it took a little bit of time. You see that before it was uh, hot, now it will take a little bit of time, but normally it, it, it will take uh, less than before. Okay, so let's, let's give it an instant. But you know that it's, uh, it can, you can uh, test uh, different uh, Python environments. So if I use Python, I thought it was quite bigger. Mm -hmm. So that if I, I saw the size of SciPy and and it was only uh, 14 gigabytes, uh, and okay. it was much, much, much bigger than that. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, you you have replacement for PIP, for BEM, for virtual M, and uh, if you have seen uh, PIP tools, and this I think is uh, a little bit related to what Fabian was mentioning, is that you can define. Uh, okay, let's try another one. I don't have to do nothing. Okay, let me turn yeah. I think so, okay, let's let's go this way and then so let's say that uh what uh what Fabian is mentioning, I don't know if you have tried pip tools, but one of the nice thing of uh so I would show uh, what is this pip tools. Is it here? Showing that 
So I, I create a virtual environment. And uh, the nice thing, uh, sometimes you will have like these uh, requirements in which is infinite amount of, uh, of things. Uh, so let's say that I create a virtual environment in which I'm just going to have Jupyter Lab, and I'm going to install uh, scikit-learn. Okay, and uh, so normally you can, you can see here that you have the requirement in, and uh, what you is going to do, and this is what Pip Tools did, uh, you can compile this. And basically, this will detect all the packages that are needed for installing these two packages. So for installing JupyterLab and uh, Scikit-learn, you need all these packages. And sometimes you will see a file like this in some project. Uh, and uh, you will not understand what is happening, uh, what are really installed. So this is what uh, PIP2 PIP does. Oh. Okay. And uh, then you can see that it was 94 packages, so sometimes people put just the requirements. Sorry, just the requirement.txt, which is like these 94 packages, but in reality you don't know what was installed, what was being installed when they tried to when they did this. But what 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 Tools does and what this what Yuli proposed is to have like this uh, requirements in which you can you can see, okay, I installed two packages, this was the input, and the output was all of this. And if you <coughs> wanted to do more reproducible, you can say, okay, which which uh, psyche learner I installed? Normally, I should see it here uh, somewhere. Uh, so, 1.5.2, and which Jupyter Lab I should check, uh, etc. And you can even put it uh, that way. So, in that sense, ah, and the other thing is okay, I, 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 sorry, I, I, I have this, but now what I want to do is to sync, which is called uh, what we call sync. Uh, and then means uh, I'm going to synchronize, I'm going to put all these packages. You can see that you just saw how much. <laughs> okay, it was hot. Again, it's, uh, it recorded that before I installed the second one, so now it's installed very fast. And I know that he has a, I have a lot of Jupyter Labs, so he knows that uh, where it is, etc. So uh, he installed all these packages immediately. And the idea of this is that if I now install a new package that I just want to test, let's say that I want to test Polars. Uh, the idea is that then I can sync and polars will disappear. So basically, I will sync to that requirement, but it will make disappear all the rest. Are, are there questions in the meantime? So we can wait. So this allows you to do exact dependency tracking that you have reproducibility, right? Yes. And uh, to be asks, uh, and there is a tweet from this specific job as a special job. If we can tweet. Okay, so I'm going to mention poetry now. Because if I project to an uh, so what you show here yeah, is a lock file in poetry uh, systems. And the pay project uh, is much more verbose than just okay and style sci fi and style Jupiter. The so, QML is uh, much more specific, in my opinion. I'm going to speak about it. But basically, and now I wanted to say so, okay, so I sync it with requirements, now I install polars, and now let's say that I sync again. And it is uninstalled, it, which is exactly what you want. So uh, let's say that I wanted to test a new package, I wanted to see something. I, I install it, but I don't want it to be in my environment because it's not part of the environment. It's not part of what I'm doing. So I'm just going to uh, sync again with the requirements and it will uninstall the package. Just to check, if you wanted to add it before sync, you will have to add it to requirements.in. Yeah. So I will need to, I will need to add the... Uh, for now. Okay. now we can sync. And now it's like, I need to I need to compile first uh, requirements in requirements text 
and then I need to think. Okay, so it's a, it's a replacement for PIP2. So we have a VEM gone, a PIP gone, a virtual M gone, PIP2 is gone. And now poetry, let's go for poetry. <laughs> so they, they also have a system for uh, replacing poetry, which is uh, you can initialize a project. And the way you initialize a project is with UVE. And then you can run what they have in a project. So perhaps I'm going to show. Okay, I need to deactivate otherwise it will continue. Uh, okay. And now I UV in it. It will uh, install. It will uh, get an, a okay. certain number of uh, files. Can you cut the file project? That's about your routine. Yes. So here it is. For the moment, there is nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you can uh, run the hello. This is. Uh, I think it, it, it adds some things. Uh, normally, it's uh, you can see that it, it says hello from uh, the virtual environment that you're in. Normally, this will install other things. No, I think that it, it, it installed Git. It did a folder Git. It did a folder virtual environment. It did a Git ignore. Uh, it created a Python where you will work. Mm -hmm. It created a Tomo. It will record the Python version. Uh, it created a readme and a log. So it, it created the virtual environment on the first run. Yes, and in this one, I didn't specify Python, which is so installed the default Python, which is 3.5. I did not. I have it activated, yes. Okay, it was created but not activated when you run. Yeah. Or did, okay. Um, good question. Good question. Is should, it, I, should I have installed it? My, it's, my, weird. it's weird that it's created and not activated. By the run function. Yeah, I think so, I, I perhaps I should have. Just activity during the time of the run. Yeah, my, my question is more yeah. that is yeah. when you run, does it activate it and deactivate it prior and after? Okay, in, in, in Docker script, like, uh, yeah. Well, uh, the run I'm going to speak later about run. So it feels like run probably activated it. Yes, but I would normally normally I would say yes, but uh, feels like it. If you run it again, it doesn't recreate it, right? <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so something's going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, let, let's activate it, otherwise, do I need to activate it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, feels like it should be that. Okay, and uh, let's say that I want to add the okay. vampire polars, as uh, uh, we already show that the, the, the initial uh, Tomo file was uh, empty, there is no dependencies. Mm -hmm. And now let's say that I, I want to add uh, and try corners in the three comments. Okay. And normally, if I look at the uh, demo, it should be there. Now I am Can I ask a stupid? I want to check. Can you deactivate the environment and have a UV add? Because from what I'm seeing, I'm half expecting it to temporarily activate it when you do say pandas, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to know if that adds it to the environment or not. Yeah. It feels like it's what it's doing. But yeah. yeah. Okay, so you don't even need to activate the environment. You don't need to activate it. Okay, it, the environment's there, it does it for you all the time. Mm -hmm. Can you try something else for me? Yes. UV version. Uh, say major <laughs> version mm -hmm. space major. Take it. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. UV version uh, dash dash L. Just uh, there is no option. I I don't know what you're doing. Usually, now it's for the, the it's for showing the version, not for the. Ah, okay, okay. Because in poetry, 
you use poetry version to uh, bump your version, I like to increase when you make a patch, when you ah, okay. develop yeah. a final yeah. review and make yeah. a something. Yeah. Yeah. Update yeah. update yeah. or upgrade something. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and now let's say that I want to build the distribution, and this is just uh, UV field. And this will normally, if you check now the disk, there should be the wheel, and there should be the tar. And if I wanted to publish, and I actually I, I did publish, I would just UV publish, but then I would need to copy paste my token, and I'm not going to give you my token. But uh, normally in PyPy, you can see that I installed a hello world uh, uh, links. And you can see here, it's uh, an empty package. It doesn't do anything, but it just should say that you can publish your own packages uh, with this command. <coughs> so replacement for poetry. Uh, and the other cool thing is uh, you can run splits with no dependencies. Like this, is, I think it's related to what uh, uh, more or less what we were discussing, which is. Let's say that now I can create a test links file. Uh, and now I create Let's let's do it uh, by by hand. <laughs> And now you'll be running sample, okay. that should work. And uh, what is cool is that you can also uh, run something which has dependency. So here I'm going to do the same. Uh, so now I'm going to run this example again. And now I think I run all this, uh, all this thing. And here you can see that I am Installing reach, uh, which is just to make the print statement more beautiful, and take UTM, which is to make a progress bar. Uh, and let's say that I want to run, and I'm going to run it, run it with reach, with uh, take UTM. Uh, and normally you will see that it, it created the virtual, uh, it created the, the progress bar, and then it printed high vampire. So what do, you, what do you have now in the directory? Not now. So it, it created it on the fly. But it didn't install those packages. It sort of loaded them without installing them. Yes. It, it will uh, load them. It, so it's ephemeral. It's, uh, it creates a virtual environment and it, it dies. So this is cool. But wouldn't it be cooler if we can add these things to the Python program itself so that you don't need to be saying with the QDM, with reach, etc. And this is, uh, this uh, you can actually do it. And the, this was uh, like, we have like request for uh, comments. They have Python enhancement. Uh, uh, what's the name? Well done. Huh? Well done. Proposal, bravo. And uh, you can basically, uh, uh, you can uh, okay. Let's remove everything. Let's remove the example. Uh, and I'm going to uh, to initiate a script. Now I can look at this the script. In the script there is nothing. So let's uh, copy paste what we have here. Oh, 
Okay, and now you can add the dependencies and uh, you can add it with uh, this command. So let's uh, check the, the, the Python program uh, once more. So this is the Python program. It requires Python 3.12. There is no dependencies. But now if I, but now if I uh, add the dependency to the script, the QDM and reach, now I can check again the example. And you can see that now the dependencies have been added in line scripting. So here it is in the script itself, it is added. And now I can just do UV run example. And voila. What happens if you try to run without using like all, all those? Um, it will not work because uh, you need to go on the edits. Yeah, yeah, but. Um, oh. Can you show me again how do you create this? It's a, so it's really the oh. split. This one? Yeah. The, In its split. It's the, the second one that you use. Yes, add the, the PTDM and this. And this will, this will be inline scripting. And this, uh, they implemented it. So I assume that PPX is going to implement it and the others will follow. But this is already implemented here, which means that you can uh, install inside your example. Uh, you can install already which, which Python version and which dependencies do, do you need. And just if you manually modify the header, we go okay. back in the and you will be understanding the equations. So there's no problem. I have done it. And uh, uh, if you want to improve uh, reproduci reproducibility, you could add something like this, which basically uh, says that from these dependencies, so we're going to put here in the dependencies. I think it was after the dependencies. So remember that uh, today, uh, uh, 0 07 of uh, November, was when I last ran it. So don't install anything new from Rich or the QDM. So now, if the QDM uh, has a new version, this will still run with the old version. So it's a lock, basically. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. And, uh... If I read, so if you try to make two years ago, for instance, <laughs> let it be fun. <laughs> yeah, we do. I but think yeah. that reach should be more or less stable. But you can try this with launching, yeah, but, for example. But the version will be the same. It will be the version. But maybe oh. you don't know when you install the environment, it will... But this is three years ago, so let's see. Yeah, so it's reinstalling them. Yeah, it's reinstalling them. But it Lanch. works because it's uh, yeah. they are stable. Right. But if you try something like launching, which is changing every month, <laughs> <laughs> and if you wanted to do even more, and this is like a one line, you can add this line at the beginning of your script. And uh, basically, you can. Here and now uh, I make this executable. And now this should well, not as well as that actually. Okay, this is uh, the live demo. I need to add perhaps the. It has to be an inline scripting. Right? No? No, it shouldn't. I would remove the space. Yeah. Like this? Yeah. yeah. That feels right. But. Let's see. So uh, you can now send the script. You say, make it executable and run it. And the thing should work with the package that you wanted, excluding new dependencies. And 
So the file becomes the package. Yes. So the file, you can just share the file and the file becomes a package. Don't tell that to people. <laughs> because you will be re receiving files all over the place with no context. <laughs> and uh, if, if uh, you can also use tools. So you can, for example, let's say that uh, now for this example, I uh, here I I add an an alpha, even though I'm not using it. Import an alpha. Sorry. <laughs> And I can run it, for example, I can say uh, wrap. Uh, sorry, I need to check in here. Check this. Let me check. And it will say, okay, actually in your program you installed uh, Python, but you don't need it. So you can put fix. And normally now the example has no number. So this is what happens. So basically, RAF checks if your Python package has extended dependencies. You can ask it to add many things. Like if you have trailing spaces, if you have uh, several things, you can ask it. It will check immediately. It will fix it on the fly. Typing. Oh, Typing. Thank you. Thank you. No, I don't mix. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but perhaps uh, can check. Okay, and I don't have that much time, but let's let's talk about Marimo. So Marimo is a notebook, but what is cool about Marimo is that you can uh, uh, Marimo notebooks are reactive, and perhaps I'm going to start with the last. Uh, so I'm going to start with the last so that you can uh, Marimo. So I'm going to use UVX by uh, like running the tool and edit, and I'm going to do sandbox. And uh, normally, uh, uh, sorry, can you tell again the between UV and UVX? Uh, so yeah, you, UV, uh, it's like a UV run tool. Okay. And I, was, I need to connect. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and this is a Maribo notebook. So, what is uh, a Maribo notebook good for? And uh, why, why do I'm talking about Maribo? So, one of the things of Maribo, which is different from uh, from the Jupyter notebook, is that in Jupyter Notebook, if you change a cell, uh, that cell will change, and then you need to start shift and the 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 up to the point where you get result. Well, here I change this cell, and this cell immediately changes, which means it is reactive. So if I change it uh, to three, uh, sorry, if I change it to three, this will react to uh, this, and it will immediately make the change. So it's some sort of Excel, <laughs> if you want. Like in Excel, you don't need to be defining, okay, run this, and then add run this, and then run this, and then run this, and then run this. No, Excel will immediately detect the formula that you have, and it will uh, uh, give you the result. Can I try to challenge you? Uh, so write a cell that f of x. F of x uh, and returns x plus a plus b. Then you write f of zero in a new cell. On a new cell, yeah. New cell, new cell. New cell. Yeah, let be other on cell again. Okay. That was good. So let's see. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, and, and, and the fact that it's reactive, it's cool, but uh, uh, what uh, what it changes, it changes a lot of things. 
And uh, another thing that these uh, marine monotubes are, and this I haven't shown, but uh, here, for example, if I show uh, example, let's change the name. Okay, and uh, so marimo cells are reactive, marimo nodules are reactive, and the other thing that they are cool is that they are Python. I should say they're not Python. They are not IPNB uh, file. They are uh, Python. So let's uh, we open it as Python so that we see what we don't want to see. And uh, if you put. Uh, let's see the mechanism. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Python? which is. Oh, don't you choose. Why? What did you say? I think I, I'm scared because I think I opened it somewhere. Uh, no, you open it in an isolated. Yeah, but it, it should be it should be in a fan box. I think okay, let me let me try it again. Because can you, can you uh, ex let's call it example uh, because I'm scared that uh, okay, let's do it again. A equal to that, a equal one, and now a equals b, and now let's save it. And uh, now this should be there. Yes. So cat example link, and here you see. Okay, there. Uh, so these are the cells. So this is the file. So there is a import marimo. It says which version was generated, and it will add uh, these are the cells a equal one, b equal one. Sorry, and uh, the cell depends a b, and here that's the input and the output. Um, and uh, so that's cool, but what it's really cool, and I think that this is uh, is that let's say that I want to install Polars, and I said, oh, Polars is not there. Actually, you can immediately install it. It will use UV under the hood. And now, the file that I showed you before has the header. Has the header that uh, UV uh, provides, right. which means that now I'm running on the notebook. Mm. I have two problems. I have solved two problems. One is the fact that uh, there is no hidden state like in Jupyter Notebooks. So in Jupyter Notebooks, there is a hidden state that I may erase, and then I continue running, and uh, sometimes I have received notebooks which start by cell number 500, and I know that that notebook will not work. <laughs> but this, there is no hidden uh, state. And the second thing it solves is that if I want to install a dependency, I know that the dependency is in the file and it will run as uh, uh, as expected. And just as a planning, if you make a markdown cell, how does it turn into the code? Yes. Wait, yeah, probably, but just to see the shape of it. And here it is. So there is it's uh, a Marimo markdown. And, uh, and then the what you prefix. Okay, I, uh, there are two things that I wanted to, uh, but just uh, I don't think it's that important. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to show the execution, but so one is that uh, uh, they are executable as a, as a script, which means that you can run it as Python, mm -hmm. the notebook. It will immediately install the dependency that you put <laughs> because they are in the script and then it will execute it. Python or UV? Uh, because it's using UV under the hood. And uh, you can also pass arguments. So you can say, uh, OK, get uh, what's the argument of this. And it will uh, say hello links. 
uh, in this case. So you can pass arguments to your links uh, to your Python to the module module. You can make it Git friendly. Uh, since it's a Python script, if you uh, if I show you a Git, I change something here instead of alpha equal one, alpha equal two. This is a script by by Fabian. Uh, the diff will be just this because it's a Python script. You don't have the problem of Jupyter notebooks in which you change something. <coughs> And everything changes, and the git div is a huge file uh, full of things. Yeah, but in particular, so this is maybe one weakness for a lot of strands. But if you have a figure that took like one hour to compute, you won't be able to save it. And I'll, I'll come. I'll come. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so th there is one which is uh, the other thing that is nice is that th they have reactivity. And now I'm going to what uh, Fabian is mentioning, which is they have persistent caching, which means if I have a function which took, uh, okay, four hours, uh, five hours, or whatever, you can define it with persistent caching, and this function, if the inputs, which means all the cells above did not change, all the, it will arrive up to that point uh, with everything safe, which means that that figure will be safe. Uh, I mean, all the process up to that point will be safe. You're saying that the reactivity is always reacting to something above, never exactly. something below. Exactly. So, so that what's, ordering, which matters. how it's working under the hood, it is creating a DAG. It mm -hmm. is creating a DAG of all the dependencies. So it, it's creating a DAG of all the inputs, so like A, a B, mm -hmm. etc. cetera. Uh, it creates the function dependent on A and B. And it will, and this DAG, and the other thing that is cool is that this DAG, he will create it uh, at when you're running it, which means that you can change the cells and it will still work. <laughs> the order of the sets, and it will still work. And this is something uh, perhaps I can show with just uh, one thing, which is, for example, I okay. one of the things uh, is that if you can use WebAssembly, which means that it's using PyoType in particular, but uh, which means that I can send you this uh, URL, and normally you will be able to run it in your, uh, in your browser. You don't need to install Python. You don't need to install anything. This is, of course, for only for for packages which work uh, uh, on browser, which is uh, NumPy, Pandas, Polars, uh, no, not yet. But uh, there are a few which works, Matplotlib. But uh, I think it's quite uh, cool. And the, the sorry, I'm gonna, uh, uh, okay, still. Ah, uh, yeah, perhaps it's fun. And the other thing is that you can, uh, okay, I wanted to mention is that you can also run it. I don't know why it's taking me. Okay, here it is. So this is something that I, I, I did. Uh, this is fully running in the browser. There is nothing uh, which is running in some Python machine or whatever. This is running fully in the, uh, on the browser. Uh, normally you can change the model. Uh, at some point, it will, check, it will search the text, and everything is running on the browser. But it's, uh, it's just something to try. And you can also uh, run it to Hugging Spaces. So now Hugging Space has the uh, space supporting Marimo, which means that you put a Marimo notebook, you put it there, it will run, and you can share it. In particular, I wanted to. And that OK to let you run the uh, interface models with a simple interface like that? Yeah. Uh, like uh, it was zero dot five billion. Did you try upper like uh, uh, eight billion model or something? Oh uh, yeah, but it will take forever to run, so it will be. It's running in the browser. Uh, now the, the one in the browser probably will not switch off. It's running in the browser, right? Yeah. So it be broken. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, they want you. They want. It's your problem. <laughs> yes, then it's your problem. And the, the other thing is like this that you can uh, deploy it on Hugging Face. Uh, for example, this is uh, when I deployed. Uh, hopefully, it will. Okay, I don't know why it's taking. The problem is the internet, mm -hmm. not. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, for example, here uh, basically I wanted to show uh, that uh, in reality, system messages and user messages is an abstraction. So if you start typing hi, uh, uh, you generate prompts. Uh, you can provide the, the the language model tools, and this is what the language model sees. And all this is done in a Marimo notebook. I changed the order of the cells to put it at the beginning, <laughs> basically. 
but you can uh, create uh, applications uh, quite easily, even that now. Uh, Okay, this is still running, but, uh, but yeah, you can deploy it on Huggy page. You can, if it's supported by Fiodite, you can put it in uh, Fiodite. Okay, so here it's, uh, but it's still uh, running. That's it. Okay. Sorry for now. <laughs> Um, so we we are late by approximately the same amount uh, at the end of the talk that I, at the beginning of the talk. Yeah, I, I propose that we continue the discussion around the uh, We're making our way upstairs. Uh, here, this is the the one I wanted to. So basically, you enter some text. Hello, how are you? Basically, it's reacting. You see below. Uh, this is uh, the numbers which are being created. Uh, hello, links. And this is the token that is created by the model. Similarly, you can create uh, so links is 3 to 6, 3 to 6, uh, 3, 2, 8, 4, 0, 82. This is links. Uh, yeah, you can get uh, since it's reactive, the, the usual interface is uh, immediate. I think it's 